Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about loudspeakers, the motor effect in a loudspeaker, producing sound waves, and finally a summary. Now we are probably familiar with loudspeakers in day-to-day -day life. We know that we use them to amplify sounds and to play music out loud. As far as a physicist is concerned, a loudspeaker is something which is used to convert electrical signals into sound waves. So typically a loudspeaker is connected to a wire. An electrical signal or a current comes down the wire towards the speaker. And the speaker turns this current into a sound wave. Where I'm representing a sound wave here by drawing its wave fronts. Before we talk about how a loudspeaker works, let's see a diagram of a basic loudspeaker. A loudspeaker consists of a paper cone attached to a coil of wire. So here is our paper cone. And it is fixed or attached to a coil of wire. Now you may notice on this diagram there are two ends and an S drawn on there. And this is to help us see that the coil of wire is surrounding the south pole of a magnet. So this here is a large magnet. And we can see that the coil of wire is surrounding part of that magnet. The coil of wire is connected to an alternating potential difference. So let's see this more in close up. We imagine that somewhere down here we have an alternating potential difference which the coil of wire is connected to. But because the potential difference across the coil is oscillating, the current through the coil is also oscillating. At one point, its current will flow in this direction through the coil. And at the next moment, the current will change direction. So through the coil here, we have an alternating current. Now let's move on to seeing how the motor effect occurs in a loudspeaker. Remember, we have this alternating potential difference that's creating an alternating current in the coil of wire. So let's draw the current going one way round, but of course at a later time it will switch. But we've said that this coil of wire was wrapped around a magnet. But we know that when a current carrying wire is placed inside a magnetic field, it feels a force. This is the motor effect. So for example, here is a current carrying wire. Here is our magnetic field. And as a result of this current and magnetic field, there is a force on the wire. Now our coil of wire is wrapped around a magnet, so it's certainly in a magnetic field. And when current passes through this coil, a force is going to be exerted on it. So for example, current comes in through the wires in some direction. This current is flowing around the coil and as a result, there is a force on the coil. But this current is alternating, it keeps changing direction because the coil was connected to an alternating potential difference. But as the current in the coil of wire changes direction, this will change the direction of the force on the coil. So now we imagine that we have the current flowing the opposite way round. And as a result, the force on the coil is in the opposite direction. So the force on the coil changes every time the current changes, and this means that this coil is going to oscillate backwards and forwards. Moreover, since the force changes every time the current changes, the coil is going to be oscillating at the same frequency as the frequency of the alternating current. So we know we have an oscillating coil, so what does this mean for the paper cone? Well, the paper cone is attached to the coil, and therefore this paper cone is also going to oscillate. So here's our paper cone, and it's going to move backwards and forwards whenever the coil moves backwards and forwards. So the paper cone is oscillating. Now it's easy to have lost track by this point, but the whole point in this is it was a loudspeaker, and we wanted it to create sound waves. Well, the paper cone will produce sound waves, by vibrating the air around it as the cone moves backwards and forwards. If we imagine the first part of the picture here is where the cone has moved fully backwards. 
So here is our paper cone moving forwards. It pushes all of the air into each other, making a compression. The cone then moves backwards again. And as it oscillates backwards and forwards, it creates this set of compressions and rarefactions by vibrating the air. So just a reminder that in a sound wave, these regions where the particles are close together are called compressions. And these regions here where the particles are further apart are called rarefactions. Notice that since a compression is created every time the paper cone moves forwards, the vibrations of air being produced are at the same frequency as the frequency of the alternating current which caused this whole process. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the SnapRevise smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.